The last three teardowns were some of the most requested engines I've had on the channel. We did a Ford 300, a Cadillac North Star, and a single overhead cam Ford 4 liter. There was one thing missing though. None of those engines were really that bad. They were tired, overheated, leaky, and kind of coming apart. Nothing, I mean, yes, they were bad engines, but not that bad. Not like we've seen on the channel. So I, I wanted some carnage today. I also wanted something from the Mopar division, which is usually, they can go hand in hand. I know all about the Chrysler 7s, but we're not doing a Chrysler 7 today. We're doing an 8 liter V10 out of the mid 90s Dodge Ram. Now I have, I'm kind of fond of this engine for a couple of reasons. When this engine came out in the mid 90s, it made more power than any other gasoline truck available. It made 310 horsepower and 450 foot pounds of torque. It's more than the big block Ford and the big block Chevrolet. The other thing I think is cool about this engine is it is designed on the same 360 Magnum, the 5.9, the 5.2, which goes back to the old LA engines. So yes, this is some ancient technology, but it's been proven. And I think these are actually pretty reliable. They just suffer from, well, I don't know what happened to this one. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you. Well, this is the good side. Someone installed an inspection port. And it's a really good placement because I can see all kinds of stuff on the inside. But the real crazy thing is what happens when you zoom out. Look at the angle of the crank snout. That's not good. And there's the bad side. And now you can really see that it is trying to kick some parts out of the crankcase. I guess uh, they didn't pay any rent. The oil pan also shows some exit wounds, but nothing made it through. But it did push some metal down in a perfect spot for an additional engine stand support. These engines are all cast iron and I didn't want to take any chances. And yes, before you ask, this wood is time treated. When I first saw this engine, I had assumed that the damage to the crank snout or the harmonic balancer was from an accident. I see that a lot of times I've bought cars that have been hit in the front and the engine is damaged in the wreck. But when that happens, you have an engine that's running and it gets jammed into the fan, into the radiator, the AC condenser. There's other parts that jam themselves into the front of the engine. And when that happens, they usually leave some swirly, scratchy, groovy things. No, okay, not that kind of groovy, but they leave damage to the face of the harmonic balancer. And there is none of that on this engine. Also, the belt is still on it, and it looks like someone tried to bend and pry the water pump to get the belt off, which it's a belt, dude. Anyway, the water pump has no damage outside of the pulley. The other thing is, if you look at this engine, there's no electrical, there's no hoses. It's a stripped down long block. Yes, it has manifolds and stuff, but it doesn't have parts that would still be here if this was out of a wrecked vehicle. Because no one takes the time to prep a cord this well. It just doesn't happen. Which means that this was likely someone's old engine which means that someone replaced their bad eight liter, this engine, with a good one. And if their truck was hit hard enough to damage the front of the crank, they probably weren't going through all that work to fix a V10 Ram. So that tells me that whatever did the damage to the front of the crank, that came from the inside. Like all teardowns, we're gonna start by pulling the plugs. I think these are gonna come right out. Yeah, let's just use the impact for this. Things started off pretty good on the driver's side. All the plugs are intact, nothing's destroyed, they're all the same kind, and they're even champions. The plugs I'd expect to see. But then, then you get to the passenger side. The first thing that jumped out at me was this plug, which has been mechanically regapped to zero. Back to scratch. And then these center plugs, not so bad. And then you get to this one. And this one has a clear problem. One of those offset straps. Yeah, that's not gonna work either. We're gonna find some malice in the combustion palace today. The next totally normal thing that we're going to do is try to turn this engine over. Why? Because I want to. No. Oh, it moves a little bit. Haha, <laughs> that didn't sound good. Let's get a bigger bar. 
We need more leverage. Yes, this is going to work. What did I just witness? It's like a GM steering column. That's broken. Let's get a close up of this. Oh, is it stuff falling around inside the engine? It's, it's fine. I don't really know what's going on in here, but I can see a hole in the timing cover. No, it was just a shadow, but the seal is totally smashed at the top of the crank and there's a huge gap at the bottom. This is gonna be fun. Next, I'm gonna pull the upper plenum off. I think that's it. Oh yeah, there ain't, there's nothing holding that down. Now we'll just start pulling the lower intake off. Battery's dying. Uh oh. Oh! No! No! I should have used some heat. Oh well, we'll have to extract that if that's worth anything. There's the housing. There's the thermostat. All right, now I got them all, I think. Yes. Well, the valley has uh, chunks of metal right there and a lot of dirt from when I pulled that lower manifold off. And then some larger chunks of metal and this uh, congealed soup of engine fluid. It's not my uh, cup of tea when it comes to sauce, but you know, still better than no sauce. There's some nice, nice green coolant. So let's take a look at these intake ports. Well, that one looks all right. It's really dirty in there, but so far, you know, just your normal debris from being dirty. Now that is the driver's side head. That's the head that had the good spark plugs. Now here's the front cylinder. This one had a regapped plug and it is pretty gnarly looking in there. It's got some sort of metal sparkle sauce going down that intake port. We're not going to taste that. Cylinder two has some of that as well. Three just looks normal dirty. The next one looks kind of dirty and then and then this one. I can't tell what's left in there but there's some stuff that's not supposed to be in there. Gooey. Really sparkly though. It's like bass boat paint in oil form. Before we go any further, let's get these exhaust manifolds out of the way. Wait, what? No. Already? Uh oh. Is this full? I wouldn't call that fluid, so I don't know if I can call it full. But there's some junk in there. That's pretty heavy. I did notice that this engine has a heat tab on it. There might be more. This is just the first one I found. And it's actually got a remanufacturer name on it. I'm not going to name the company because they probably had nothing to do with why this engine's a core and who knows when that was done. However, uh, it does look like the center's melted out. It's hard to tell. Usually they're really pronounced and this one isn't. All right, let's get this valve cover off. The first thing I notice is this beautiful green coolant that's in a place it's not supposed to be. Coolant doesn't go there. 
but oil does and there is a lot of it and it starts off as oil and then it becomes that engine sauce it's very beautiful but we are definitely going to need the drain pans for this engine i don't see any valve train destruction when we were looking in the valley i didn't see any bent push rods we won't really know until they come out let's get the other side off pretty much the same scenario on this side I don't see any valve train problems. There's some nice clean coolant that slowly turns into whatever this engine sauce is. Next, we'll get the rockers off. So all the rockers look pretty good. I didn't see any major wear like there's an oiling issue. And then none of the push rods seem to be uh seem to be bent. Except for this one. That one is definitely bent. Okay, we got one bent push rod. Right there. It's not bent as bad as uh Oh, actually, wait, we, do we have another one? No, we have junk on my table. Yeah, so that was the second one back. And I did keep these in order. So we got one bent push rod. And it's not even bent that bad. You can still use it. Now for the driver's side. That one's bent. That one might be okay. Very same scenario on this side. All the rockers look okay. No major wear, but we have one bent push rod. That's bent about as bad as the other one. These are not bent, or not badly anyway. This one is bent pretty bad. Now it's time to crack some head bolts loose. Now notice, not all of those sounded the same, which could be an indicator of what might be wrong with this engine. Did I forget a bolt? Did I miss a bolt? Or are they that heavy? Or is the seal that good? No, we're gonna break something. Let's get blue. All right, probably just stuck on some dowels. Whoa, that's, that's wrong. There's a whole lot of wrong going on in that engine. Wow, that head is really heavy too. Great googly moogly. Ah. <laughs> uh, ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, the head gasket looks okay. Well, I have no idea where to start here. I think the funniest thing to me is that these pistons have an arrow to denote where the front of the engine is. And these two look like they're pretty pretty on on, on point. This one. I don't know that I would call it a passing grade, but that's not right. This one is pointed up, and this one is pointed that way. It's also really far down in the bore. That's kind of suspicious. But we still have to do our test. Science must prevail. And we need to see if we have connecting rods or disconnecting rods. I'm pretty sure... Oh? Oh? Oh, ah, ah, let's try this one. Okay, oh, that's solid, that's solid. So, two of them survived, that's about how my grades were in high school. And this one has all kinds of marks from the valves. I don't know that it came up and hit the head as much as the engine was turning over with the piston at top dead center and the piston was turning over. Pistons aren't supposed to turn over. 
I think this one here also has some marks on it. We'll get a better look once these are out of the engine. And here is the cylinder head. There's clear marks on the valves from piston to valve contact in the first cylinder. It looks like the piston did come up and strike the head, but that could also be, again, because the piston wasn't oriented correctly when that happened. The middle three look okay, and this one also has a few marks on the valves. I think this head is still going to be serviceable. Obviously, it'll need to go to a machine shop, but I think this head will still be worth selling. This is what that cylinder head left behind. Why did I do that? Before we take this head off, I'd like you to all to remember that the other side, the side that we already pulled off, was the good side of both the block and the spark plugs. So if you thought that side was bad, this side might look worse. I bet y'all need blue for this side too. Yes. Well, that was on there. These are really heavy too. Son of, why don't they put handles on these? Oh, that's bad. That's worse than the other side. Definitely worse. What an overachiever. Wow. I, I am so impressed. What's down in this hole? <laughs> That's a rod. <laughs> it's still bolted together. Oh my, wow. Okay, well that explains a couple things. Yeah, this one's hurt pretty good. This is just amazing. I didn't know Chrysler had cylinder deactivation in the 90s. But in all seriousness, there's, there's a lot of junk in there. There's a lot of broken parts in there. And then this piston, it has marks from hitting a valve there. It's got some sort of poop on it. Why did I do that? Oh, I just, oh, I, I dimmed the light with whatever that was. Ugh, that's uh. No, I, I wrecked it. I gotta fix this. Why'd I do that? So the middle cylinder looks like it survived. This one is kind of at an angle, but this is the most impressive part. So I don't know if you can tell, but that crank, the angle of the dangle is, is incorrect. Something really came apart in this engine, worse than we've seen on the channel. There, we'll put my good flashlight on it. That's not good. Well, we still have to do our test. I think that's solid. Yeah. Wow, three of them. I swore that one of these is gonna be bent. I think that one's gonna end up being bent. Thankfully, these are cast iron heads, so they are uh, strong. Lots of marks on the valves here. This is definitely going to need some attention if someone wants to reuse this head. Middle three cylinders, not so bad. The rear one is hard to see because it's got a bunch of the gook, that stuff. I would struggle to call that oil. I'm not going to say anything yet, but... I might have some sellable head cores here, which is impressive considering the level of damage. All right, let's take the lifters out of this thing. So far, all these lifters all spin pretty well. Nothing's really torn up. They don't, not all of them spin great. I think there's a little bit of sludge in some of these. I, mean, I don't also know how long this engine's been sitting with this mixture. 
of whatever you want to call this lubricant engine sauce now we're going to do a little experiment we're going to try to turn the crank over and see what moves and what doesn't well I can tell you the cam doesn't move and what's going on in there oh that's not good you, you don't want to have that <laughs> yeah out of total curiosity I wanted to weigh this cylinder head because it's heavy and I zeroed it out with make sure it's all calibrated right and 78 pounds that's a lot of head all right now we're going to attempt to get the crank pulley off I have my doubts well the bolt came out a massive bolt all right let's see if this works here well, we're actually running into the water pump that's a problem I'll just power through it let's get this water pump out of the way i'm actually happy that whoever destroyed this i don't think that's i don't think that happened while it was running those are definite pry marks but they line up perfectly with the bolts well it doesn't appear that the uh impeller made any contact with the timing cover which is a good indicator that this didn't take a direct hit to the snout or to the front of it the rest of this water pump looks okay but when the pulley spent like this this is definitely scrap Now comes time to pull the oil pan. Now normally, if I didn't see this level of carnage, I'd flip the engine over to pull the pan. But since we know the pan is full of stuff, I need to pull the pan in that position, which means I need to remove the piece of time-treated lumber. Now, obviously, this is kind of a sketchy scenario, but it's okay as long as you use an OSHA-approved kick. I just wanted to show you another look at what the snout of the crank looks like. Nope, we got some pan sag already. Pan, not pants. I have a feeling this pan's gonna be pretty heavy. Definitely don't wanna drop it. I don't know if I can hold this up or not. Oh, that's not supposed to be there. That is... Ah, uh, wow! Absolute wow! Oh, they, they broke my chain! I've pulled a lot of oil pans in my life. I've also seen a lot of things in oil pans. Main caps are not one of those things until today. This is a main cap. This and this also main caps. There's some main bearings. There's part of a rod and piston. What is this? That looks part of like part of an oil pump. There's a sheared off main cap bolt. That's part of a piston. Rod bearing, part of an oil pump. I don't even think I need to take the oil pump apart on this. It did it itself. I think this is broke worse than the Audi V10. And then there's some sort of molasses, congealed molasses. L look, look at this. Wha I don't even wreck, that's a rod. That's a rod. <laughs> what happened here? 
There is so much in here. I Rings, pretty much any part out of the bottom end of an engine is located in here. And it, it's all coated in this engine mayonnaise, this brown mayonnaise. I don't think that's, I mean, this is like, look, look. I don't know why I just did that because I'm pretty sure I just ripped my glove. Oh well, I'm already committed. I, I had to clean this stuff up just to identify it. We're gonna give this a really good, that's not gonna help. I mean, it kinda helps. This is never going to be right. It makes things slightly more identifiable. Ah, wow. And it's like molten. You know, I guess I could run this through the parts washer. I don't really want to wreck my parts washer that way. It, all right, we're, we're actually going to try that. We're just going to... I'm not going to put the bigger pieces in there. I can clean those off myself. I am... Oh, the feeling that I can tell you how this feels like, I can't... It's unpleasant. Some of that's just going to have to stay. All right. Uh, if we're washing stuff, let's just... Let's just wash it, huh? All right, the parts of parts are in the parts washer, and I'm gonna use some pig mat and try to salvage whatever kind of cleanliness I had going on here. While those are in the wash, we need to address a broken wrist pin. I don't know if this will come out. Will this come out? Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. I'm, that's amazing. But what's more amazing is the crank. I'm pretty sure that's broke. It's not supposed to do that. And then of course you've got some parts hanging out of the pickup. Let's get this flipped over so we can assess the full extent of the damage. All right, I don't even know if I can get this flipped over. I bet these engines are pretty close to the weight of a Cummins. Oh, I have a feeling that it's going to uh, dump a bunch of junk, so I'm going to get a pan underneath her. Oh, it's dropping chunky stuff. I don't know what that was, but we have it. I'm just going to pull the band-aid off. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> I think we can pull the timing cover off next, but I got to show you what this looks like because this is absolute carnage. Well, as you can see, crank is sheared at the second set of rod journals right in the middle. And it is just, it's total carnage in here. It's, there's nothing, there's nothing that looks like it survived. And it's destroyed at the back, it's destroyed at the front. The middle is the only part that is... Eh. We're not even going to talk about the fact that I just realized it's missing a whole bunch of freeze plugs. I wonder why that happened. Do you think it got some compression into the cooling system and popped some freeze plugs out? Well, this is what we're looking at. Broken oil pump. Deleted those two rods while well, we, we found them. There's one piston hanging out in the bore. There's a twisted and broken rod. That piston's still in the bore. You can kind of see it. There's where the crank is sheared. Right in the middle of that journal. Ripped the main caps out, sheared the bolts off. That bolt is bent. 
it actually broke the threads out of the block there, which is why we got some threads on that bolt. And then you have some, some like the, the, the column, the eye of the storm. And then you get to the back. Well, first, pickup's just full. Some rings hanging out. And then the rear two cylinders, gone. Just, just gone. Coated in whatever mayonnaise brown goo you want to call this. Now we're going to pull the timing cover. Broken, shattered. Now I think we can uh, get the nose of the crank out. This is how you pull those out, just like that. Oh, it's got like a handle on it. You know, I'm gonna go put this in a parts wash with the rest of those parts. Next, we'll get this remain seal plate that just fell off. That looks good. Now we'll get the pickup out. Now we can just take this out, no tools required. Sometimes that's nice, except for when it's your engine. Can you imagine the amount of force it takes to bend a main cap bolt? I think now is as good a time as ever to remove parts of the oil pump. So I know it may be hard to see at this point, but this is cracked and shattered. And I don't know if this is going to come out. Oh, it might come out. We have blue. Will you just let go? Whoa! Yeah, there's one piece. That one just wants to hang on there. I'm throwing everything. All right, now I don't know if we're gonna be able to get the big piece out. Oh, is there a big piece? Wow, I can't believe how many pieces this is actually in. That's the first time we've ever seen that on the channel. It's pretty impressive. Here's all those pieces. Let's get some brake clean so we can see what we're looking at. So here's what the timing cover looks like. And you can see it's got a nice imprint of that oil pump gear. This timing cover is trash. I mean scrap, I'm, I'm not gonna throw it in the trash. Now let's see if we can get anything out of this pickup here. But oil can't really go through that, but it's hard to tell whether that happened before or after. Now it's time to tap some of this rotating assembly out, rods and pistons. Uh, the next rod and piston we're going to remove is this one, which is on the broken journal. And I'm using a 15 on this. This is supposed to be a 916, but it's all distorted. The heads of these nuts are destroyed, so let's see if we can get them loose. Yeah, that was the right call, I think. Oh, the threads are going to be wrecked, too. Oh, I don't want to mess those up. Now, I know I need to be careful here because if I hit the wrong thing, I can't reuse it. Now we need to see if this engine turns so that I can get the rest of these rods and pistons out. All four remaining. Normally I like to start at the front with a the front fell off. No. 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 Yes. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
as you can tell, I'm not really concerned with hurting anything inside this engine. I don't think I could do any more damage to it. Now we need to figure out how to turn this a little further to get these two. That did not work. Not the way I intended. Let's see. I'm sure we can do it this way. That'll do it. the last surviving rod and piston. And I'm using the word surviving loosely. Now it's time to remove the remaining main caps. The remain caps. Sorry, it's late. All right, now the remains of the crank. Hopefully I can do this without cutting myself here. Hopefully it comes out. It doesn't come out. Uh, blue, where are you? Oh, it'll come out. Yeah, we just gotta try better. We have one more task at hand, and that is to get the cam out. Almost stripped it. No. Yeah. There is one more piston still in here. There we are. Well, this block is just impressive. There's, it was obviously in a drive-through in this let go. It smashed that. Galley there. I'm really surprised that with all of the catastrophe inside of this, it only put two windows in the block. Just two. The main bearings are uh, they're pretty roached. There's a bunch more goo. I'm not cleaning all this up. This is this is like relentlessly dirty. Like the goo is self-reproducing. But something interesting. I did flip these bearings over and they are 10 undersized? Yes, I said that right. Oversized. Yes, because they had to grind the crank down so they will be oversized. You can see there's lots of impact marks. That one is just totally trashed. Looks like it's cracked right there. Pretty sure that whole those cracks there, that's what blew the freeze plugs out of this. Compression in the cooling system will launch those plugs. Yeah, this is definitely too heavy to make a table out of, so I don't think this block has much of a future. The next thing I wanted to look at was the camshaft, and it is definitely a, a Chrysler cam. But I don't think any of the damage is from this event, per se. I think this is all just wear 
I mean, who knows how old this cam is if it was replaced when this engine was rebuilt. It's really, really hard to say. Now we'll look at the remaining bearings. And they're not, okay, they're bad. They're all bad. And I looked for a date code on them. I couldn't find one, but they all are 10 over, under. I mess that up every time. Next, we'll look at this uh, modular crankshaft. Look at the impact marks there. Now, there is some rust forming. That's flash rusting from coming out of the parts washer. And there's a few peculiar things about this crank. Obviously, we know that this crank has been ground. That looks like what broke it. This impact mark here. But this journal is fine. The center three journals are fine. This one is, is filleted. Nobody should want their steak this way. This is really bad. That's a lot of heat that did that. And the same thing happened here. You can see most of the rust is centered around where all this heat was because it changes the way the metal reacts with water. I'm making stuff up. Sounded good though. Lots of impact marks. I mean, it, it, it's just, it's so beat up. This thing was turning some serious RPM when it broke. There's even damage on the snout where the uh, oil pump gears were. There's more damage there from breaking a main cap. I've never seen an engine do that, ever, ever. Especially something that you know wasn't likely modified. I don't even know if they make aftermarket parts besides headers. And here's the surviving, that's a 14 millimeter socket. Don't pay attention to that. That's not a wrist pin. Here's the surviving rods and pistons. We have none that are in good shape, zero. They all have some sort of damage from flailing debris. I wouldn't use anything out of this engine, especially considering what it went through, but they will make nice desk ornaments. Now the crazier thing is this rod is, well, it's doing the twist. This went through the parts washer for a minute. You can see it's just, it ripped the rod and piston out of the bottom of it. That's likely what happened. There was probably a rod floating around turning 4,000 RPM. And this rod too is bent. I think these four are straight, but I still wouldn't use them. Actually, I think this one's bent too. Yeah, that one's, that one's definitely bent. Okay, I take back what I say, but we're not, we're not done yet. Here are two of the most mangled rods I've ever seen in my entire life. Shattered wrist pin, absolutely annihilated. There's the bottom of the rod cap. There's the top part of the rod, the big end, and then it just goes to la la land. And what's interesting too is look at the color. This was glowing red at some point. I, I just can't believe it just twisted. It, it's just, it's so bad. It's also dangerous. It's super sharp. I, that's so impressive, but we're not, we're not done. Here are the contents of the oil pan after they came out of the parts washer. That is insane. Ah, I have, there's a bolt, the ring, the ring, there's a ring. Nope, not gonna make that joke again. That's a medium well bearing ring. There's a nice clean piston nugget and another nugget. This is a super size. That's got the arrow on it. Half of a main cap. Coincidentally, the other half. You just need a little JB Weld there. I am just, this is a wreck. Here's another main cap. This is the one that ripped, or that left a bolt in it. So that bolt, this ripped the bottom part of the block where this bolt's in, which I'm, I think that's a piece of it there. I'm sure we'll find this in this pile. 
bolt's still got some goo on it. We'll just set that over there. There's a bearing. It got hot. These bearings got super ridiculously hot. Oh yeah, there's a big piece. There's, <laughs> look at the temperature difference from the heat. Look at the color difference. <laughs> this is, I've never seen anything like this. There's a rod cap bolt that's been trapped. I guess it's bent. Main bearings, is there a date on these? Nope, 010. Nope, no dates. There's part of a block. Piston. That's part of the oil pump. This is, there's a rod cap bolt. There's top part of a rod. <laughs> Look what it does to the rod cap. <laughs> It's just flat. It's just smashed. There's another bearing. I don't know what. I don't even know what this is. Oh wait, that's a sensor. That looks like a crank sensor, maybe. Because there's got a little bit of PCB on it. This is so amazing. The one thing I don't see here, though. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It only broke the end of, it looks like this rod cap is the only one that took some damage. Rest of them, ready to go. Ready to pop. It's probably the only thing I can sell out of this engine. Exhaust manifolds, intake manifolds, wrist pins. Just the wrist pins. Here's a better look at all of this destruction this is it's engine rubble it's not even gravel it's just it didn't get a chance to turn everything up it just shattered everything has been shattered There's some large nuggets here popcorn style here it's i just, the the shape of the rods is just this is great what else could you ask for I will be the first to tell you, I don't know everything. I try to learn something new every single day. And today, I learned that you can blow up your V10 Ram engine hard enough and bad enough to blow the main caps off the block. I did not think that was possible, but this engine just proved it to me. This engine was just annihilated. And there's a few different things to consider here. On a factory engine that hasn't been rebuilt, hasn't been into, you can kind of remove most of the machining errors and sizing errors out of the equation. But in this instance, we don't know whether it was run low on oil. We don't know whether it was run on dirty oil. We don't know if it was machined incorrectly. It was sized wrong. It was dirty. Maybe they didn't clean the block properly. There's a whole bunch of different variables. Maybe it was making a little bit of noise and the owner wanted it replaced, but they wouldn't replace it until it was actually blown up. There's all kinds of different scenarios at play here. One thing is for certain, I don't think I could blow up an engine worse than this. I don't think it's possible, it's just happenstance. And I think this channel has proved that the more cylinders you have, the greater the damage. Although those V6s, the Kia and the Honda, those were really, really terrible. Now, this engine doesn't have a lot of sellable parts, but if you want a rod and piston for your desk, you want one of those mangled up pieces, I have too much on my counter, so I'm happy to sell that stuff. And then, you know, the exhaust and intake manifolds and the wrist pins. That's it. That's all that survived this. If you'd like to buy anything off of this engine or any of the other engines that I've torn down, or if you want to buy parts off of this 2007 Charger SRT8, I'm going to leave our email and our web address in the video description. You can go to importapart.com. You can peruse our inventory. I've been uploading all of our parts cars and all of our loose parts as well. You can also fill out a part request form to see if we can actually find what you're looking for. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. I am really tired. I'm going home. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.